Morning gang, hope you're going well. Uh, welcome back. Uh, welcome if it's your first time. We'll go easy on you. Uh, yeah, the last paddock of sowing. We've been looking for this one for a while. Um, but yeah, we finally found it. So we've got about 10 hectares here. I uh, don't know how it's going to go through the machine. Um, there's a lot of this, well, what we call hogweed or wireweed. And it's, it is pretty dead, so hopefully it won't drag through the machine too badly. Uh, so what we're sowing is we've got all the odds and ends. Um, so we've got a couple of varieties of wheat, some vetch, uh, some rye grass, a bit of clover. So a bit of a mishmash just to clean it up and get it in the ground and, you know, something less for the mice and rats to eat around the sheds. So a um, bit of an issue we've got. And I don't know how it's going to go. Hopefully it'll go all right. We've got... There's about three tonne there, um, so that means it's going to go on about 300 kilos to the hectare. Now that's, usually we're only sowing wheat at, you know, 90 or 100 maybe, and uh, yeah, so what we can do with our machine is generally we've got the two sowing tubes here, so usually there's got fertiliser down the front and seed down the back. What we can actually do is, under the box here, Hopefully you can hear me over the fan. I can actually split it. We've got these handles here. But I can actually, oh, it's a bit seized. I can actually split it so, I don't know, it's gonna move. Um, I can split it so we put half and half. So rather than trying to get, you know, 300 kilos down one tube, we can split it and put 150 down both. So I'm hoping I'm hoping that's going to work all right. Anyway, we'll uh, we'll have a crack and, and see. So uh, yeah, but no, we'll get this done. Then want to get home and get spreading or get the tractor home. I've got to drop the jewels off it. Um, these outside tyres, and then we'll get the the linkage spreader on it. We haven't had the spreader on this tractor before, so I'm going to have to. Hopefully, it all works out all right. But it'll, the spreader will go on the tractor fine. But what we might have to do, we need a GPS feed, oh, sorry, we need a speed feed out of the GPS in the tractor into the monitor um, on the spreader so it knows, you know, how quick we're going and how much to put out per hectare. So hopefully it's just a case of plug it, plugging it in and it should work. But if it doesn't, um, today's Sunday and yeah, probably shouldn't be starting on Sunday. But with this rain coming, um, yeah, I want to get some some urea out on the canola as I spoke about. I was gonna leave the jewels on the tractor just for ease and I'm here on my own, but what I found spraying, it is pretty damp underfoot and I'm a bit worried that having that extra wheel will be another sort of wheel track. So um, yeah, we'll take the jewels off and we'll just run it on the single. So anyway, we'll get this bit sewn and um, yeah, hopefully it uh, all goes to plan, touch wood. Righto, we're all done. <coughs> uh, I didn't bother showing you any of that because it was was pretty ugly actually. Um, yeah, it was wet and that wire weed, hogweed that I talked about, um, it gave a bit of trouble dragged and what I might actually do is next week get one of the boys to put the, we'll put the harrows on, the old harrows on and we might just run over it and just try and scatter a bit of the lumps and bumps out. It's, yeah, it is pretty ugly so it did, probably, uh, yeah, wasn't worth uh, showing. Uh, so yeah, I've decided I'm going to whip these jewels off. Wasn't sure, um, spoke, spoke to a mate and he said leave them on but um, just with the ground conditions spraying I reckon I'll, I'll pull them off. Normally after sowing if we, we, um, I'd take to the tractor and spend half a day washing it and you know give it a good clean up and clean the cabinet and all that sort of stuff but um, it's going straight back to work or straight to work so um, and it's gonna get a fair bit muddier. Um, so to get this up, rather than sticking a jack under it, um, all we did just do is get a block of wood and just drive back up onto that, um, back the inner, inner tire up onto the block of wood and that just, just gets the outer tire off. So it, it saves a lot of time, it's a lot safer. Um, yeah, so I'll just back that up there. Now these tractors, these fent tractors do actually have hydraulic um, down pressure on the linkage. So if we had a, if we had a frame, we could actually, most tractors just, these linkage arms go down under their own weight or 
or the weight of the implement you've got on it whereas um, the fence and I don't know about any other of them but we can actually it actually will will force those arms down with hydraulic pressure so you can if you had a frame you could actually lift the back wheels of the tractor off the ground using the linkage arm so that's another yeah sort of it, um, yeah it's a good idea um, if you're ripping or something like that and having trouble with penetration you can actually force force the linkage arms in but anyway we'll uh, I'll back this back and we've got the rattle gun here we've got a um, I never really had a big big uh, um, rattle gun or a three-quarter or inch drive this one's an inch drive it's Milwaukee um, we seem to have plenty of plenty of Milwaukee gear here we shouldn't really get a sponsorship out of them but when I looked at it, um, because we've got the jewels on this and and I bought it back at harvest time actually for doing the jewels on the header and I was just going to buy an air operated one but the beauty obviously cordless, the beauty of that you don't need a compressor but the actual torque on that was bigger than what the air ones we could buy at the time so we thought oh it makes sense we might as well just go with that one. So anyway we'll get this backed up and um, yeah get this wheel undone. Easy as that. So we've got a yeah, bit of daylight there, only sort of a couple inches, but that's enough. So I'll crack these nuts and then I'll um, yeah, get the telehandler here and we'll, we'll lift them off. Just uh, put, some, put some earplugs in because these things are notoriously loud. relatively painless um, what I like to do or what I do we've got another set of nuts um, that's the same same thread as the <coughs> the axle nuts that hold the wheels on and we just saw oh, what I would do is if um, that's quite a fine thread so I've just put those nuts on and then put the original nuts back on and done them up and that just protects the the thread from any mud or you know if we hit 
hit something we can um yeah we might be able to straighten it and resurrect it but yeah just um it's pretty fine thread and not hard not very uh, pretty easy to damage so anyway the other thing we've just got to do here is uh yeah just got to change the the pda spline over so that's a thousand and inch and three eighth i think and yeah we just take it back to 540 the the little spreader's just got a 540 but we we run the pdo on a thousand um it runs i think the spinners have got to run at about 720 revs so um yeah we'll be idled we'll be idled back but yeah we've we run it at a run it on the thousand speed which we can just select in the cabin rather than the 540 and we'll be running around at you know 1200 revs pretty the tractor will just be ticking over so anyway we'll get it backed on and um yeah then we're gonna muck around and just get this the last of the air seater um screens out and and put the put the uh spreader monitor in so anyway we'll uh get it happening so the spreader's on wouldn't usually have it this high but um yeah just got up i'll just show you underneath we've um we've hit a bit of a snag look at you see dog so um oh, i've jammed that in there the pdo shaft's actually too too long that's actually dropped out uh, sorry the pdo shaft is too short um yeah and that's dropped out so on the other tractors we've had it on um yeah obviously the spreader sits closer i know there's not a lot of room there but when it's down in the working position obviously the the spreader must sit a bit must have sat a bit closer to the to the back of the tractor or the pdo shaft sticks out a bit more or something like that so um yeah that's i'm not too sure how we're going to deal with that uh today on a sunday and a public holiday monday it'll be raining by tuesday by the time we time we can sort it out it'll be um yeah the rain will all be here so i can put it on the magnum which we might have to do i've got to go and do a, a contract spraying job for a mate um who's overseas so i might even fly and go and do that this afternoon and then we can drop the boom spray off tonight or in the morning and and put the spreader on the on the on the magnum just so we can get a bit of spreading done um because i don't it's sort of it's got a funny end on it i've just got that trestle under there i don't like getting under stuff that's that's up in the air like this but um it's got a funny end on it you can see there so it's it's not not a case of just swapping it over for something else uh i don't think it is anyway um anyway i might have a bit of an investigation on that and just see see how we go if that gear little gearbox there has got a 540 spline on it we might be able to rob another pdo shaft or something that's a bit longer so anyway i might have a, a bit of a sticky beak and see what i can work out and hopefully we can get a resolution morning uh, a bit of a gloomy day in paradise uh, a bit cool this morning so anyway uh decided to um sort of park the spray yesterday arvo uh, parked the spreader yesterday arvo um with yeah with the pdo shaft issues so i um, actually went and did some spraying for a mate who's overseas at the moment um just yeah he farms just across the border uh, in mexico uh yeah about 35 k's away so i slipped over there and did 100 hectares of canola for him <coughs> um and then i'll get him to come and do he's got a self-propelled sprayer so I'll, when it comes fungicide time on the canola i'll get him to come over and do a bit for me so yeah the the barter system is still alive and well um so this job here we've got it back in the workshop a couple of props under it as i said earlier make sure when you're working under stuff that you prop it otherwise you might get squashed um so the problem we've got is the pda shaft is too short to the go to the back of the tractor now i do have another one there um i don't know what it was off but i think it will be long enough the problem i've got is i've got to get that off there now that doesn't look like he's been undone um in recent times so i'll uh i may even put a bit of heat on it i just need to be careful of the seal in that gearbox there with with heat um but yeah other than that we're sort of if i can't get that, that off we're sort of dead in the water here a bit because today's public holiday uh, and yeah i think it'll be raining 
the way the, the weather the weatherman's talking it'll be raining by this time tomorrow so by the time we go and get some um longer tube for the pda shaft and and top it over and that it'll probably be raining so anyway uh it may come off really easily, but we'll just, um, yeah, we'll have a bit of a play here and see how we go. Oh, we're still having... GoPro issues, so what I did on a whim, um, yeah, just put a little bit of heat around um, that casting. That'll be hot, as you can see the steam coming out of it. Um, yeah, biggest thing with, with fertiliser, it tends to corrode everything and um, everything seizes up, so a little bit of heat on it, but that's just a 540 sharp and it's actually got a a notch in it so we'll just be able to slide that other PDA shaft on there and it'll lock on straight away I'll give that a bit of a clean up before I do that and then yeah we should be in business hopefully so I was trying when we had the John Deere it only had a what do I do with that shaft I was going to show you here it is it had a just had a thousand um, inch and three eight spawn come out of the back of the tractor and what we used to do is we had an adapter which is the reverse of this. So it had a, a female on that end, and then it just had a had a male 540 spline on the other end, because um, we used to run that this spreader on it. So, um, yeah, so, but I must have sold it, wouldn't have sold the tractor. But anyway, this is gonna work anyway. So I've just, uh, didn't, want, didn't want to start cutting and bugger and stuff, but yeah, a little bit of heat on it and just gave it three or four good hits with a, um, big punch there and a and hammer and uh, yeah we managed to get it off so anyway we'll let that cool down a bit I've still got to pull them off put the monitor in the cab which is here um, yeah so we'll bang him in and by the time it's the other we we'll get that done the other thing have cooled down and we can uh, get into it so yeah happy days okay um, we're just out the other farm here I've come out and I thought there was a, a hopper here um, for the auger, but there's not. So, uh, yeah, so I can't actually, I can't, can't actually auger the, um, the urea out of the truck into the spreader. So I'm just waiting on, on Sarah's gonna run one out to me. Uh, you might be able to see it, you might be able to hear it. There's a crop duster. I'd say he's, whether he's spreading a bit of urea maybe. Um, yeah, anyway. Well, no, we got going here, a bit of mucking around, getting these screens set up. Um, I tried to, what we're able to do is with the USB, we can transfer lines between the screens. So, I tried to transfer the lines, the spray lines, because we spray and spread on 36 metres. I tried to, uh, yeah, copy the lines out of the screen in the spray tractor and put them in here, but for whatever reason, the paddocks have transferred across, but the lines haven't, which is a bit frustrating. So, anyway, I had a line here in the um, in this screen that was pretty close to, to what we sprayed on the other day anyway. So, um, it actually hasn't worked out too badly. Uh, yeah, so we're putting 150 kilos out to the heck there. You probably can't see that out there, but here we've just got um, the 150 and then uh, we started with a bit, not quite three tonnes, so as we go, um, the scales just count down. That's an actual figure, so the um, spreader's got scales on it. So we'll do at 150 and, you know, three tonne, we'll do about 20 hectares uh, to a load. So, uh, yeah, but it's turned into a pretty cracking day, actually. The sun's come out and it's starting to warm up. So, uh, yeah, we'll uh, hook in here. Um, yeah, neighbours must, they must be a bit cleverer than me or a bit more organised, they got the plane working, so, um, but yeah, since we know this is trafficable, we were on here the other day, so, uh, yeah, we'll get, try and get this canola done anyway, and, um, yeah, we'll see how we go over time, we might try and do some cereals as well, but, yeah, we'll be, be burning into the night, I'd say, so, anyway, we'll, uh, see how we go. Done out the back here. Uh, I've just 
got a bit left for uh, your rear left in the truck, so just doing um, Paddy Cabali. It's rocking along pretty well too. Uh, it hasn't had an in crop spray yet, so but it, it, in saying that, it looks pretty clean. So just putting 75 kilos of your air on this. Uh, we generally only will do this. We generally only put 150 in total. So uh, yeah, we'll we'll do a second pass later on in a month or something like that of um, another 75. So but. Yeah, I don't know, just looking at the weather forecast, they've actually backed it off a bit for tomorrow, so it'll just, uh, it doesn't look like it's going to rain <laughs> any time soon at the moment. The sky's pretty clear, so, but yeah, we'll just suck it and see. And, um, if we can keep spreading tomorrow, we will. I'll, um, it's getting pretty late in the day now, it's about 4.30, so we'll try and, um, yeah, I'll get this truck, we'll get this paddock finished anyway, and, and then, um, I'll have to go home and load the truck and yeah, get Sarah to um, pick me up and run me around. So, uh, anyway, we're getting there, we're making them all. Truck emptied. I'll just show you. Um, that's the the area. It's just like little marbles, really. Um, like most things, the, the the bottom of the hopper. It's a bit dusty, but like like most things, the quality can differ. Um, but that's probably probably a pretty good, consistent size. Some years you'll get it, and it'll be you know it'll be quite quite big and and throws really far and then other years you'll get it and it'll be quite dusty you can see the back of the spread is spread is white with sort of the, the white dust so uh but yeah anyway that's that's what it is with um you know what we've chucked out with a, even with a heavy dew and the moisture that's in the ground um yeah it'll be gone by morning so it'll so the plants will have taken it up they sort of talk with all this um, climate stuff I talk about nitrogen application and that sort of thing and um, volatilisation and losing the sort of nitrogen into the atmosphere but this time of year with the cooler temperatures um, you know there's plenty of science out there to say that we don't actually lose any when there's you know the conditions like what we've got at the moment so um, yeah you can sort of it gives you a bit of confidence you can put it out and you're not actually losing it it's not disappearing into the atmosphere so um, anyway that's a bit of a science lesson for you if you're uh, that way inclined all oh, right we're back at home i'm just here loading the truck with a bit more urea um, we've got about oh hello little doggo come to say good day uh we've got about 17 ton in this field bin here so uh, yeah, weather just it's been up past six, it's not super late yet, but I might go and have a bit of dinner and just see what's going on. And look, it's pretty clear in the sky at the moment. It doesn't look like it's gonna rain, but the wind there is a breeze round in the in the northeast and the old fellas would, would say with the the wind round there it's gonna rain. So I sort of looked on the on the weather bureau on the radar, like out to I think the weather radar goes out to about five hundred and 12 kilometres or you can look at the national one and there's a bit of, bit of rain up on the coast but I wouldn't have said it was going to rain, you know, I'd be surprised if we wake up in the morning and it's raining so um, I'm, I'm half inclined to sort of knock off now and, and get up early, get up at 5 o'clock or something and get going early um, in the morning so uh, anyway we might, we might finish this one up. Uh, yeah thanks again for watching, there's yeah, always something different going on so yeah Keep watching along and keep liking and subscribing and commenting. It's um yeah, it's a bit of fun. So uh, yeah, anyway, we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you. Ta-da.